any benefits from having your heart broken? Oh my god, you have no idea. What's something that you would never accept again? Oh, something that I would never ever expect is 50-50. 50-50. The man has to pay. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah. You're looking almost like it's data. It makes men like me not want to put any effort in with anyone. Men are taking you out because they think you look pretty or they like how you how you present yourself to the world. Like that's what motivates them. They don't know you. So I always felt like I gotta prove something. Like I gotta be not only pretty, but also smart and also funny and also nice and also all these things. And that left me feeling a lot like, oh, maybe I wasn't good enough. Yes, what is up, guys? So, on this episode of the Foster Unfiltered podcast, we have the lovely Adina on the podcast. Now, basically, she's from Romania. Lovely, lovely girl. Has some very interesting thoughts on who should pay for, for dates and how the first couple of dates should go. So, very traditional in that sense. I think her opinions are going to be very stirring and interesting for you guys. Um, the reason I'm doing a little brief intro is also I wanted to try something new. And partly because my silly producer was testing out a new camera and we lost the first part of the interview which is a shame but <laughs> i am happy to say that the rest of the interview podcast is brilliant it's really really interesting and we dive into topics such as the differences between dating in romania you know, dating eastern european men and british men and how maybe british men are a bit more cold but the real crux of the interview podcast which I found fascinating is Adina really looks at her dating life and sees where she can improve and sees what in her next relationship, how she could have done something differently. And I'll be honest as a guy, and I think I speak for most men, we're not self-reflective like that. Like women are, we just make a mistake and we make the same fucking mistake again and again. Oh shit. Here we go again. So listening to her talk about how she would act differently from when she dated, when she was a bit younger, how she learned from heartbreaks and how she's now set boundaries to protect herself from the dating world, from morons, from red flags, I thought was really, really interesting. And something I should probably learn because I keep dating red flags. For all the ladies that I've dated, I'm not sorry. Let's get into the podcast. Three. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, it was only okay, sorry, I got nervous. <laughs> One, two, three. So sort of talking about how you've evolved throughout, you know, your years of dating and when you were 18 and stuff, what's something that you would never accept again that you used to accept when you were younger and why? So it's what I told you about not being, not being picked up or I would never ever accept last minute dates because I feel like, you know, if that's what I mean for you, just, you know, a blank space in your schedule and I'm just filling that up. I'm not interested in that. I would not accept, uh, oh, something that I would never, ever expect is 50-50. 50-50? 50-50. That's... The man has to pay. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my thing. I mean, yeah. maybe some people are good with that. I'm not. Okay. And yeah, okay. also it's just inconsistency in general, you know, like when you're talking to someone and they're replying to your messages like after two, three hours or something like that. I can understand that in each of these cases, people can get busy and things happen and everything. But how I see it is that if someone is truly and really interested in you, they will ask you on a date like three weeks prior, let's say, because they want to see you that bad. They will respond to you on time. Or if not, maybe they will just be like, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm just very busy. I will respond to you when I have the chance and everything is fine. Yeah, I agree. Or, I, yeah. Think, I think if I hate game players, I think if you're interested in someone, you don't need to wait four hours to send them that message and then they reply and within an hour and then you wait another four hours to send another message like don't do that if you if obviously if you're busy fair enough but like if you guys are getting to know each other and you're talking like yeah no one wants to send a message and then 
you can see that the, you know like the the thing on fucking hell i mean i don't even use snapchat anymore but like you know when you're sending a message on snapchat and the fucking avatar pops up and you're like oh yeah. shit they're seeing me type no one wants that that's fucking weird yeah you need to chill out if you're doing that but if I, if you send me a message and i see it i'm gonna reply i'm not gonna wait four hours i'm not gonna be like oh let's let's keep her waiting for a little bit longer especially if we've met already definitely not because i just think like what's the point are you trying to prove you're cool are you trying to prove that you're busy um and then i think yeah if someone's taking days to respond to you then Even they just don't hours, care they're just not interested yeah you're a side option yeah or you're an afterthought Definitely. i think also going back to what you said last minute date so if i were to ask you out let's say it's thursday and i thursday morning and i asked you 10 a.m hey you want to go for a drink tonight? Oh, sorry, we can't do drinks. Do you want to go for a meal tonight, Thursday evening, same day? Would you be like, no? Yeah. Because you don't want to do last minute. Yeah. What if I said tomorrow night, the mm. Friday? Would that be acceptable? Is that still yeah, too? Yeah, I think I think it depends on the person, obviously, because if it's someone that gave me the vibe that for them I'm just not number one, then probably not. Yeah. I think this all stems from the fact that you're only dating people you see potential with. You're not. Yeah. A lot of us, me, I've done it before. We sort of just go on dates whenever, and it's and it's not always serious. Mm -hmm. Whereas I, I, I can tell straight away that you know you're only dating the people who genuinely have potential. Otherwise, you're not even entertaining them. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not sure if that's a good thing, as I told you, because I feel like we as women. It happens, it happens more than often to just, you know, see a guy, think that, oh yeah, he will be a perfect match for us, and then forget to observe his behavior. Mm. If he did like the first, let's say, first two dates went awesome, everything was all right, he was respectful, he did everything right, then maybe we tend to just you know, excuse him for some things mm. or forget about our standards. I think that's why it's very, very important to have some strict, strict standards that we are led by in, you know, not only in dating, but especially in dating. So why do you think it's, it's so important to have strong standards so you don't end up just dating people who are gonna eventually let you down? Yeah, so you don't end up hurt. Mm. And... Does that also mean, it, I don't know if you did this in the past, but like, you just, if you see a red flag, you've got to, you can't ignore it. You've got to. Oh yeah. yeah. Have you done that in the past where you've ignored a red flag? And Definitely. It's, yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. we're all guilty of that and it's. Definitely. And yeah, I think it's easy for us at least because you guys have to do the, you know, have to, <laughs> usually have to do the effort and yeah. plan things or, you know, I mean, that's how I see it. That's how I want it to yeah. be. And yeah, for us it's just sit back, observe, don't do too much, don't do, you yeah. know, and we, we often, if not like all the time end up doing a lot more than yeah than i don't mind doing have. the majority of the planning i like taking control of the dates i just want some just some sort of respect and gratitude like a thank you if, if it's been something specially planned uh or a lot of effort's gone into it i don't i don't like it when people take that shit for granted mm -hmm. uh, i'm not talking about like just choosing a bar that's not I didn't do anything special there. But if I've planned something, booked something because you really like it and I heard it in conversation, you know, gratitude goes a long way. You don't have to, yeah, women don't have to do too much besides look, you know, get themselves looking nice and being on the date and actually contributing in the conversation. Yeah. And I don't think women should have to plan too much and they do end up planning a lot normally. But I think, yeah, just some, some gratitude. Because you do get women who just take that shit for granted. And it is annoying and it, it fucks it up for the people, the women who are gra are grateful because then it makes men like me not want to put any effort in with anyone because I'm like, well, that woman didn't appreciate it. So who will? But what I'd like to also know is just from talking with you 
I can see you think a lot about your days. It sounds like you analyze sort of previous dates as well. Yeah. Do you think we can, you know, as people, do you think we can really sort of learn to improve as humans from dating and develop and definitely yeah i think that's the that's my favorite thing about dating and that's the most important aspect from my from what i saw in my life and my friend's life and everything i feel like it helps us get to know it, uh, ourselves so much and you know because when you go on dates and you meet someone that you like or maybe someone that you don't like that much but they just make you feel a type of mm. way. You get to feel those feelings. So you just get to observe your emotions and you get to know, oh, okay, so when he did that, I like that. I'm the kind of person that likes being picked up. Or, yeah. I don't know, when he asked me about my body count, I felt disrespected. I think this is my boundary now. So I think this is the way you get to create your boundaries and get to know what's okay for you and what is not okay for you. And also, I feel like through dating, you can learn a lot of stuff about yourself on other like, um, plans too. For example, plans on other areas. Yeah. So for example, if it's, I don't know, let's say that you fall in love with people very, very quickly, because I'm guilty of that. I was <laughs> guilty of that. I was doing that before. And I would just be like, oh, okay, so if they do my, I don't know, the things that I consider that are, that are um, common sense, like, you know, the picked up part, the car door, mm. the meal dates, everything. I was like, oh yeah, that's a great fit. But I would forget to think about who they are as a person. And then I would be like, oh, okay, why am I feeling attached to this person when I don't even know them? Oh, do I like the attention they, they you know, put so over you, me? So you maybe learned that maybe falling for someone so quickly maybe not has I don't want to put words in your mouth but has not always been based in the fact that you actually love them it's maybe because they've made you feel a certain way and because you've and maybe you wanted I don't want to say attention but like you you like validation the valid yeah so and then you look back and you're like when it's over and it's been some time and you've analyzed the day you're sort of like or you've analyzed the relationship and you sort of like actually maybe I didn't love them I just enjoyed how I felt yeah yeah I think I think that gives you a great insight on who you are because you know those are some things that you got to change because yeah. you can't you can't be validated by external sources all day mm. every day always so it's something that you got to work with you definitely need ex external uh, uh, sources though in terms of yes of course you need to be happy within yourself to be happy in order to be happy with other people. But it's also like, I d I'm not someone who believes that all you need is you. I do think it is great to have someone in your life, whether it be family or friends who help you, you know, feel good. Um, but the, I guess just, this is one of the main reasons that, you know, I wanted to get you on the podcast so bad is because the way you look at dating is so different to how like we look at it in modern dating. You know, we look at it as fun. We look at it as, some people look at it as, oh, I need to get married fucking ASAP. I need to have kids. Some mm -hmm. people, you know, a lot of people, especially modern dating, it's, it's just fun for them. It's just, you know, I want to date this pretty girl or this model or whatever. Whereas you're actually looking at these dates and analyzing them afterwards and saying, okay, this is a boundary now and actually thinking about it. I think a lot of us will be like, you know, I've definitely said, in the past like oh i don't like to do activity dates on the first day but i never actually thought that's a boundary that just subconsciously started to become my thing yeah and it's the same with like meals on a first day i don't do that mm -hmm. because i realized but i never sat down and thought okay jamie from that date what didn't you like it just was there the subconscious thoughts and now it's become a boundary so the fact that you actually almost self-analyze analyze the person you've been on the date with and actually ruminate and think about the date. I think that's fascinating and you use it to improve because no one that I've spoken to has ever 
obviously people look at it that way yeah but very few people actually sit after a date especially if it's gone badly the last thing you want to do is think about a date yeah when it's gone badly and actually think all right what can i learn from this how can i improve what's my new boundaries what did they do that was so bad what did i do that didn't help i think that's a really interesting way mm -hmm. to look at dating and i'll be honest i don't look at dating like that i see, i do it more for pleasure yeah um but I think it's a good way to look at dating. And I think, you know what? I'd probably save myself a lot of fucking mismatches if I looked at the things that I don't want people to, be, women to be doing, you know? Yeah. And that's what I think is really interesting with you. Um, yeah. So yeah, I like the way you look at dating, definitely. Is it a little bit, you know, you gone from sort of the romantic view to maybe almost like, I don't know, obviously it ties into your psychology background, but have, do you reckon you've gone maybe the other side now where you're looking almost like it's data? Or is that unfair of me to say? No, to be honest, I try to do that. And I feel like that's the best, the best way to look at it because, you know, you're going on a first date with someone, first, second, third date. You get to know them a little bit. But still, you don't know them. You cannot tell me that you're in love with that person. Yeah. You know, like you know them a little bit, but it's not that serious. So you got to be able to just take your feelings, your feelings, what you think that you're feeling. Because usually, especially women, especially, you know, my friends, I heard from them and I heard a lot of stories where they're like, oh, yeah, I went out with this guy and he's my match, we're gonna be married, or I don't know, I love him, we're so good together. And yeah, I think it's very, very good to just be able to see that it's not like that, that it's just, you know, he offered you something that you needed, and to do that, you need to know what you need, mm. and to not be dependent on something that another person is giving you, you gotta know what you need, so you can give yourself that first, and then, only then, you can focus on that other person's personality, not on, you know, what they have to offer, because that's your boundary. Mm. Everyone should give you that. Everyone that you want to be with should give you that. So that's like just the standard, okay, for you. So when you finish a date, a first date with someone, what is your after date routine, if there is one? You know, you say you sort of, look at it and you analyze is so after you've had a date and you've you know the emotions of that you felt from that day have worn off you know whether it's been a really good day and you're just happy and whatever or sad whatever if it's been a bad day what do you then do do you actually sit down and have a little think do you journal about the date like what do you do any of that what mm. Journal? No, I didn't do that, but that's a great idea. Actually. <laughs> but do you, really but is. do you like sort of sit for five minutes and think? Yeah. Yeah. So you, so just, just bri very briefly, just explain that process. You'll sit okay. and you'll. So the thing is that I used to not until that long ago, I used to always feel like I have something to prove. Mm. Cause you know, you're a girl. Men are taking you out because they think you look pretty or they like how you, you know how you present yourself to the world. Like, that's what motivates mm. them. They don't know you. So I always felt like I got to prove something. Like, I got to be not only pretty, but also smart and mm. also funny and also nice and also all these things. And that left me feeling a lot like, oh, maybe I wasn't good enough. Okay, it was great, but maybe I could have been better. Oh, maybe he didn't, I don't know, do this thing because I didn't seem interested enough. And I think that's very, very toxic. And dating a lot of people and seeing that I have a pattern with this mm. made me realize that I was just not maybe, yeah, validating me enough. I wasn't, I didn't think that. What, what I mean in sort of the, sorry to cut you off, what I mean in, with that question is when you finish a date, what, what's your actual routine afterwards? That's what I was... Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, yeah, I used to do that. I used to, you know, just not feel like I'm good enough. And then I would think about it. This is an example, like, you know. I would think about, okay, so this date, 
left me feeling very I don't know maybe not very worthy let's say maybe not good even though it was a good day yeah. why is that why do I think that I did something wrong was it really something wrong or is it in my head was it really something wrong or was it like something that maybe happened in the past and I'm associating this with mm. the new person you know what I mean because yeah. maybe maybe someone in the past like I went on a date with and they thought that I'm not interested in interesting enough and maybe now even though this person gave me no reason at all to think that about myself I just bring this from the past and I just need to you yeah. know just get uh, to prove myself a little mm. too much and I think especially for women I think we have this need to just prove ourselves to be independent but not too much to be pretty but you know still be humble to be all these things and yeah I think it's very very important to just sit for a second and just think about the feelings that this person yeah. transmit it or something like that to you yeah and just observe them so you can understand exactly where they're coming from and how you can improve them you know okay so Maybe yeah something bad. so in terms of like the process it's sort of just a checklist how did they make you feel after the day if it was is it linked to any previous dates how they made you feel like are you projecting sort of previous emotions onto yeah. that day maybe they didn't do anything wrong and maybe it's just it reminded you of a previous bad experience if it was a bad day or and then you think of you, when you're sort of sitting amongst your thoughts so you, you're looking at is there anything I did that I could have done better and then how do you sort of round that sort of process off when you sort of like right I've analyzed the day what's the last thing you sort of say in your mind do you sort of just be like okay <laughs> I'm seeing this person again I'm not or I usually go on second dates mm. To be honest, if I, if it wasn't so bad, I usually don't feel like I, I was able to just create an accurate opinion yeah. of a, a first date. So yeah, if it wasn't something disrespectful and if there were like, I don't know, just in terms of common sense, they were right and they were as I said, respectful to me and uh, with me and everything. Yeah, I would go on a second date. Mm. But yeah, yeah, I I would just try to not uh, think about it too much. But I I've noticed that this thinking and everything just comes out when you sort of like this person. Like yeah, it's not overthinking really, does come. Yeah, with, yeah. yeah. So I think it's very important to just try to have this all the time and mm. not only through dating, but yeah, when dating, as I told you before, dating since it's like very emotional related, mm. like when you like a person it brings more feelings and so it's more to observe, it's more to analyze, it's more to feel mm. <laughs> and yeah, hence more to change. Mm. if there's something to be changed. Yes, guys, how are we doing? If you are enjoying this podcast slash long video form content, I do have some other guests potentially lined up. And yeah, just let me know what you guys think of it. If you're enjoying it, if you want to see more content like this. You know, it was a lot of fun to film, so I'm more than happy to bring out more content like this. But yeah, let me know down below in the comments uh, if you want to see more content like this with more guests. And yeah, we'll dive deep into everything dating, sex, and my wacky opinions on it after they've talked. So yeah let's get back to the podcast so in terms of like modern dating what do you think men and women get wrong i think what makes them lose time and feelings is just that they don't know who they are before they go into the dating scene like they don't know their boundaries they don't know what they're willing to accept they don't even know most of them many of them they, they don't even know what they're looking for when going on dates so i think very true. i think that's why so many people are stuck in situationships and one of them is mad and they think there's going to be more and the other one is very perfectly fine with the situation and yeah it's just a conflict there that could have been easily solved if people knew what they wanted and also 
if people had boundaries and be like, okay, I'm not willing to accept, accept this situation because I'm looking for a relationship. You're mm. not giving me that, I'm not accepting that. But when you don't know what you want or when you don't have strong, strong boundaries and you don't know what you're willing to never ever accept, like a drinks date, yeah. <laughs> I think it's very hard to, to just say no. Yeah. yeah, no, that's so well put. I think that obviously is why I'm assuming when I ask you what would you recommend is for them to actually, first of all, get to know themselves and also analyze the date and afterwards and why. Don't be afraid to say no. I think that's and set the strong most boundaries. important thing. Yeah, like yeah. you don't like something, just block them. Yeah. Block them, you've got a block button. Okay, I think that's a little <laughs> bit harsh. I don't think you need to block. I, I honestly, I think you should explain. No. I think you should explain to them why maybe it didn't go well. I, I personally don't like it when people block unless they've done something really bad. No, I'm talking about disrespect yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know. But I think with what you said, yeah, clear boundaries. I think that's why it's so important. It can be scary to think about. It sounds ridiculous, but sometimes it can be a bit scary to think as a man, what are my boundaries? Um and I think we all fucking let people walk over boundaries sometimes. If it's someone who's really pretty, if it's someone who makes you feel a certain way. So for me, I don't like it when people are sort of late to dates. I've had someone turn up very late to a date and I think I put up with it maybe because she was just really attractive to me. And I think, whereas if it's someone who maybe I found less attractive or someone who made me feel when I actually do spend that time with her, doesn't make me feel as good, I would not put up with them being late. And eventually I got my shit together and I said, no, look, this is unacceptable. You can't be, it was an hour and a half, an hour and a half late to a date. I couldn't wow. believe it. I was I furious. can't believe that you were waiting. Still, yeah, I, there. because I, it, it was a long, I'd taken an hour to get there and I was like, it was a really sunny day and I didn't want the day wasted. Mm -hmm. And I literally looked back on that. And I was like, I'm glad I, stayed on the date with her um but i only did that because it was a sunny day and i actually got to pay for all the drinks afterwards because i was just like you're late you're paying yeah but she was late hour and a half we'd been on a couple of days oh. so i was like but i was literally like and then at the end of the day i was like okay um she wanted to go do something else and i was like no you were an hour and a half late i'm going home like we could have done that if you'd been on time so i sort of got my got back at her in a way and she paid for the drinks but if i hadn't traveled an hour to get there and it hadn't been a sunny day i would have left after 20 minutes um but sometimes you've got to think long term in a weird way it's quite calculated what i did but her excuse was i had to change my dress and blah 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 and it was just loads of bullshit phony excuses and i was like okay she was a bit younger than me and i was like you are not the right person for me because she started saying I, I was so late to things. I was late to job interviews and stuff like that. Mm. And she was like, imagine how I feel when I miss a job interview. And I was like, are you fucking late? It's your fault. I don't give a shit. Like, it, how can you say, it? imagine how I feel when I, like, I feel so sad when I miss my job interview. And I was like, you have two legs. You're not disabled. It's your fault for being late. Yeah. And she's playing the victim. And I was just like, whatever. I mean, I think it shows you that... She was immature. She wasn't disciplined. No discipline, immature, too young. Simple as. Um, okay, I just wanted to get rid... I, get that off your yeah. chest. No, no, I wanted to, I wanted to get... I didn't want to... That sounded really harsh, but I, I wanted to move on to the next question. Okay. Uh, but yeah, she is all those things. <laughs> um, but she was also really kind, to be fair. Um so do you think people are just sort of mindlessly dating? Yeah, most of the time, yeah. And I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but I had. And I know that a lot of people do too. When you go through a, let's not say traumatic, but you know, you, you go through a, I don't know, heartbreak or mm. a failed relationship or something like that that leaves you wounded and very sad and something happened and obviously it was two people's fault so you can't quite process it because you're still feeling it and you're not really able to see what went wrong and you're not really able to 
fully recover from that because it's maybe too I don't know hard to think about it and you just prefer to erase that and just move on and that situation just maybe with the same person maybe with another person but just comes right back in your life and just experience something over and over again and then at some point you're just forced to look at it and learn from it because you can't stand like the same thing happening again and mm. again because if you don't change nothing like nothing will change right yeah so i don't know if it ever happened to you but i know that it's it really it happens often mm. so i think people mindlessly date because they're looking for a distraction maybe from heartbreak could be a distraction so they go out and date people and also maybe just a distraction from everyday life and just the mundaneness of it dating can be an escape for that i generally believe but that's not a healthy escape i think that's quite a toxic way to look at it but i think people do just sort of aimlessly date and they stumble into relationships that aren't aren't bad but aren't great or they don't settle for those relationships but then they'll just continuously date have situationships end it have another situationship end it and it repeats itself in a cycle and it's a vicious toxic cycle and i think there's so much mindless dating. Yeah. And I do think it stems from trying to distract yourself and not setting boundaries That's and putting up with point. putting up with not great, not bad, but not great. And I think that's where it, yeah. what it boils down to. Have you ever had your heart broken? Of course. <laughs> yeah, 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 I have. So seeing how you... Sorry to hear that. But seeing how you analyse and look at dating any benefits from having your heart broken oh my god you have no idea i'm so glad about oh my god i'm so glad for that you have no idea enlighten me so i feel like it made me not being so comfortable because it made me very very sad and it made me mm, it quite lowered my self-esteem in a way because, you know, it happened, these kind of things happen when, as we talked before, you accept red flags that you saw mm. and you didn't take into account. And you just, yeah, you feel like you, you broken the trust with yourself, you know, because mm. you let things slide. So now you just see yourself as less worthy maybe, or, yeah. you know, so yeah this happened so it forced me to just okay be sad for a week a month two months but then i was just done with it and i was just like okay so i gotta do something because i cannot live like this anymore so i cannot be this sad anymore so yeah instead of distracting myself with another person or thinking about the situation because I think people sometimes most of the time can find quite a comfort in uh, suffering or thinking about something because it's familiar like it's Mm. easier to think about a failed relationship than just get up and change yourself change it's easier to be the victim sort of thing yeah maybe and I think it's very helpful when you know, you think about it, if you observe, as I said, observe your contribution in the failed relationship, in the heartbreak, and just decide to not do that again. And yeah, with that decision, action comes, and with the actions, your life changes. So I think, yeah, I think heartbreak can be very beneficial. Mm. So what would you boil down the main benefit of your heartbreak? Mm. Um, Getting comfortable with with just sitting in the feelings? Yeah. Do you think that's good? Do you think it's good to sit in in your feelings? I think it's... Experience feeling sad. Oh, yeah, it's the only way. Because I'll be honest, when I feel sad, I'll eat, I'll drink, I'll do something, but I don't want to sit in those feelings, and I know it's bad. I know we're always told, sit in your feelings, but it's hard. So you've done, it sounds like you've obviously done that, you've sat in your feelings and and felt those emotions. I've ate, I've... Yeah, but (laughs) but you're very conscious of feeling those feelings. Do you think that that's... um, You think that's a good thing, to sit in those feelings and just let the, the emotions go over you and let them be? I think it is, but also I think it's very unrealistic and very hard to say that, oh yeah, you gotta do this, like... At first, you will try to avoid it. You will avoid it. You will 
but only to realize that after a while they all come back and they come back like worse than before mm. because you know feelings were building up yeah and you repress you them. just yeah you just feel worse so it's even harder mm. so yeah at some point you just gotta do it you some gotta point face you gotta it. face them yeah yeah you gotta face them yeah agreed yeah i need to work on that myself uh, i've never been heartbroken though uh, but maybe that's because I'm a commitment phobe. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> um, and I have to ask your opinions on dating apps. Have you been a part of dating apps? And what are your thoughts on dating apps? Do you think they're just somewhere to actually find someone? Or do you think they're just for hooking up? Uh, I am part of dating apps. And I've been on a few days, dates. But... What I can say is that I've noticed a very, very big difference in the way men on dating apps, I don't know, not necessarily treat me, but like make effort in, I don't know, me liking them or in our dates or in our interactions. Uh, you think they take it less seriously? Yeah compared to men that, I don't know, either I met in a pub or I just talked to them a little bit or we were friends before or something like that. They just, I don't know if it's because they don't know me, maybe it can be mm. a very, yeah, it can, it can be understandable or maybe because they're not looking for a relationship. But yeah, I feel like when you're on dating app and you're trying to find your soulmate there, it's a bit harder because the people there have so many options, you know what I mean? Like, if yeah. it doesn't work out with you, okay, I'm gonna slide on the next person and that's it. And yeah, I think it makes you a little bit, I don't know, not as sensible to your emotions. Mm. Yeah, I think, and in terms of just whether you think dating apps are solely a place to hook up or do you think you can actually find love or not even love a relationship off of them. I mean, I've had girlfriends off of dating apps. So I have, from my own experience, found found serious things. Um, but a huge part of my, of my hookups have been from dating apps because it makes it so easy to meet women and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So what, what's been your general experience in terms of Hook. I know you're you're not the type of girl who's looking to hook up. You want something serious, um, but like, do you feel like a lot? You've had your time wasted by guys who have maybe promised and not delivered on that. Said they're looking for something serious, and then actually, mm. they're just trying to. Have I've sex never with you. got to that part, to be honest. Okay. Like I went on a few dates with guys on dating apps, but. I don't know, I think it was something common because I've never met someone that I really wanted to be in a, in a relationship with. Off of dating app. app. Yeah. So... Okay. But yeah, to be honest, I tried. And I wouldn't mind meeting someone and being with them off of a dating app. But still, as I said... You prefer meeting them in person? I prefer them putting effort in and the people from dating apps didn't. So yeah, that's yeah. the answer. And you think that's because you can just swipe and find someone else and who's maybe more amenable to what they want to, what they want. I think that's one of the reasons, yeah. Or maybe some of them, them really just have a, you know, this mindset that they want to hook up and that's it. Mm. Or maybe some of them went through a breakup and they, excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> they just want to, I don't know, get that person off of their head and mind yeah. and everything. So, yeah, it depends. It really depends. But, yeah, it just didn't happen to me. I don't know. Maybe you just need to mm. have a prior experience with yeah. someone. So, so all, you your, can... all your exes come from, all your serious relationships come from meeting in real life? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Are you still on dating apps? yeah okay so there's <laughs> just still in just in case yeah there, yeah you might meet your husband off a dating app i doubt it but you might um but then again i've had two girlfriends off of dating apps so you never know i mean it's always good to have a date just to have something to analyze after <laughs> yeah there so... you go always good to have something to analyze yeah also i think it's bad if you i think it is i think it's healthy to go on a date every couple of months i don't mm -hmm. think you should go months without dating i think yeah, because then you lose that social muscle, that dating social muscle if you don't. I think it is good to go on a date every couple of months. Yeah. Uh, just don't go crazy. I mean, 
that's probably advice for my own self. I'll go crazy. Yeah, I'll go crazy, <laughs> but yeah. So obviously going back to sort of the meals and stuff like that. And that's your criteria. That's completely fair enough. But do you think women these days expect too much from men? I think women these days expect too little. Too little. Too, definitely. There are definitely guys who don't give any effort. But there are some women who have asked me to do certain things on a first date, take them to like a really expensive restaurant. And I'm like, I'm not willing to do that because I don't even know you yet. I mean, the thing with that, I think that's disrespectful. Just assuming that someone is going to just take you eat whatever yeah. you want. I think I never do that. And I would never do that. Like just assume that someone has the finances to yeah. take me wherever Because I've spoken to women and they said, this guy took me to the Shard uh, the other week for the first, and I was like, for the first date? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, but you're on a date with me now, a week later. And she was like, yeah, I don't want to see him again. And I was literally like, he's an idiot. I was like, at the end of the day, it's about the connection, right? Going for a meal, yeah, you can go for a meal anywhere, but guys, don't take a girl to the Shard. Don't take her to, this is, a, this is me mostly speaking off a dating app. If you know the girl already and you want to take them somewhere really nice for a first date, that is fair enough. But if you know them off a dating app, Instagram, unless you have the finances for it, do not take them somewhere really, really fucking fancy because you will regret it because that will become the standard. Hmm. That's my view. And I also think if it's someone who you haven't met face to face yet, it's almost like what I'm getting at is if they've asked you to take them to the Shard on the first date and you haven't met face to face, that's an instant red flag. Yeah. Because definitely. then they're just looking for a free meal. And if they're not, they're looking for someone who can consistently do that for them. And there's no, there's no problem with a woman who wants to date someone who's well off. But if you're telling me I only date, only do first dates, because I've had women say this to me. I had a Brazilian woman say it to me. I only do first dates at the Shard. I only do first dates at... Uh, uh, really expensive restaurants. That's a red flag to me. And it also means we're not compatible because right now I can't afford to do that. But also, hell no, am I taking a girl who I've never met before to the Shard. Third date, we're having a great time. Yeah, sure. Let's go to the Shard. I really like you. Let's do it. That mm -hmm. should be a special occasion. Maybe that's just me, different part of my life to them. But that's how I view it. Mm -hmm. So I wonder what you think. Okay, so the way I view it, Honestly, like, I would, n as I told you, I would never, never just assume that a guy will take me in a place, like a very expensive place, or any place, to be yeah. honest, because I had guys before that asked me, oh, okay, where do you want to go? And I'd be like, I don't know, you choose. Like, you asked me out, you, you got to choose. But I feel like it's a direct correlation between where guys are taking the girl, uh, the girls, and how they feel about them. Mm. Like, how serious... They, not about, they don't know them, but just in gen, if, if, it's, if it's a first date, but just in general, how serious they can think about themselves going with that girl. You yeah. know what I mean? No, I do agree with that. If a guy takes me to McDonald's. They obviously don't have high, they don't value you very much. And yeah. I'm not going. That's the thing. I'm, I'm just letting them, okay, where do you want to go? And if, if he's going to say, oh yeah, I will just go to KFC, grab a... <laughs> zinger or I don't yeah, know yeah. and I'd be like yeah I'm not going and that's it okay you're not for me I'm not going but I don't see anything bad we wanted to be you know treated nicely no, and being like spoiled and taken care of but just don't assume I think just don't assume yeah, yeah if you want to go out with someone just I don't no. know the person will show you what their financial situation yeah. is yeah and they'll show you how much they value you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, even if it's not the most expensive restaurant, maybe if he's taking you to a, let's say, mid restaurant, but he's mm. like putting in effort and just, I don't know, showing you how much they care for you through, I don't know, maybe they're bringing you a little chocolate or yeah. they're doing a little something. It still shows that they have the mindset of a person that would do these things in the long run. Yeah. I feel, no, I, I feel like, but yeah, not assume. That's just cheap. Okay, so we did this last time with a previous guest, Maria. What we're going to do now, Adina, is rapid fire questions. Okay. 
Okay, let's go. Okay, so brief answers. We both struggle with brief answers, but we're going to do brief answers. What do you look for in a man? Just give me three things. Mm, respect, consistency, and oh, um, what else? Good personality. <laughs> Good personality, okay. And what is your type physically? Mm, I like tall guys. That's hair color important? Mm, not really, no? no, no. I used to be only into brunettes, but yeah. then I moved to the UK, so I don't think that's an option anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. What sort of the minimum height? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. As long as they're taller than me, like consider considerably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> taller so you than can me. wear heels. Yeah. Yeah. Wh how tall are you? Um, five, seven. Five, seven. Okay. Nice. And what gives you the ick? Obviously, someone needs to take you for a meal, but like, what gives oh, you the yeah. ick? What gives me the ick? Mm, being asked to pay 50-50. Oh, no. Okay. Um, someone not understanding my jokes. <laughs> that's awful. So, um, oh, disrespect, but that's not the yeah. ick. That's like block. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, just as I told you, responses after yeah. five, four hours yeah. and just stupid yeah. excuses and yeah. all these things. We've all sort of covered those. Um, just going back to just very quickly with, with paying 50-50, do you think the guy should pay for the first date or do you think he should pay for every day? Every day. Every day? Yeah. So 10 dates. Let's Okay, that's not realistic. Let's say we go on seven dates. Yeah. And then I ask you to be my girlfriend. I have to pay for all of those dates. Yeah. I have to take out a new fucking mortgage for that. <laughs> Did you not think that's like, that is what I mean. Like, I get it, it's your thing. And I am of the generation that thinks the guy should pay for the first date, maybe the first two or three dates. But seven dates, what if, it, what if you go separate ways? And I'm just saying seven, what if you go on 12 dates and then you decide, I don't know. It's just how I view things. I think if I went on 12 dates with someone and then we decide, actually, no, we're not going to see each other anymore, and I've, I'm the only one who spent money on dates, I'd be pissed. It means that you didn't like them enough, I guess. If you went with Will them. you be getting the guy gifts throughout this dating period? Let's say 12 dates, four months of dating. Gifts? I don't know. Like, What will you contribute financially to the dates? My presence, my uh, company. No, I won't contribute financially okay. in any form. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's your view. I don't agree with that view, but fair enough. I think it's great to get these opinions. Um, perfect date, first date. I know you like a meal, but like, yeah. what's your perfect place? I really don't mind. Like, as long as I get to just dress myself up nicely because yeah. i don't want to go to a place where i'm not able you to, like to dress, dress up yeah. yeah and yeah as long as it's a decent place and it's food that i like perfect okay and sort of perfect weekend when you're in a relationship perfect weekend yeah so let's say you're in a relationship how would you what would be your ideal way of spending it with someone like would you do you want to go do an activity? Do you want to stay in and watch films? What what would sort of be? I love staying in, to be honest. Yeah, just I like would love staying in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's my thing. Okay. That's my perfect weekend. Okay, and I already know you're more relationship girl. Uh, in terms of your star sign, what star sign are you? A Scorpio. A Scorpio. I'm a Aren't sign. they the ones that everyone dislikes? Mm. Is that me? It's Scorpios and Gemini's, I think. And Gemini's. Yeah. What was the main traits of a Scorpio? They're very loyal. Very loyal. And they're very... Um, mm, they have trust issues. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you <laughs> think you align with those? Mm, not as much as I did before, but I think I do. And yeah, Scorpios have a, like a very intuitive and looking into things type of nature. <laughs> Hence the analysis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But What's do you think your zodiac sign? I'm a Taurus. Okay. But do you yeah. think, do you think everyone aligns with their star signs? More or less. Okay, I disagree. But interesting. I think I am very similar to a Taurus, but I know people who are Tauruses who just 
don't resemble it in my opinion. Um, what's the quickest way to your heart? Um, oh, effort. <laughs> effort is effort. A, guys, effort is a common theme when it comes to women. We need to put in more effort. Uh, 100%. Not me. I put in loads of effort. I'm perfect. Um, but Just connection. Yeah. Just someone who tries to build up a connection. Yeah. There's a thing. And final question is, how is your dating life going right now? Mm. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Are you dating more for pleasure or are you dating to analyze at the moment? Mm, it's a little bit of both. Little but bit of both. yeah, lately a lot of things happen that are more like, okay, do it for the plot. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't my intention. Yeah. Like I'm not supposed to do it. But you know, if... If things happen, I'm just going to have a nice Go story flow, and yeah. a funny story for my friends. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, hey, if anything, dating is for having funny stories. Yeah. All right. I think, thank you so much, Adina, thank for you. coming on. I hope you enjoyed yeah, being I on did. the podcast. I could talk to you for ages because I think there's so much that we can discuss with you in terms of your views on dating. They sort of, they contrast nicely with mine, I think, in a way. And I also think like the analysis. So yeah, I'd love to get you back on at another point and we can explore other topics. Mm -hmm. High value men, high value women, what makes them, what you perceive them to be. I think we'd have different views, but yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. I will link Adina's socials down below, but if you want to just tell them your Instagram, if you want them. It's a bit complicated because <laughs> my uh, last name is Hrior. But I'll link it down below. Yeah. I'll link it down below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. We are going to have new guests every couple of weeks coming on. Really going to do big things with this dating podcast. Going to be hitting all the juicy topics, all the juicy questions. But yeah, this is a bit more of an analytical debate, hopefully. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button because I see that 70% of you that are watching are not hitting the subscribe button. So please do that for me. And yeah, thank you again, Adina. Thank you thank guys you. for watching. Peace. Right, guys, if you made it to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you so much. It means generally a lot to me that you made it this far. You're a real one. And yeah, guys, I had a lot of fun filming this. If you did enjoy it, then please let me know down below in the comments if you want to see more videos with more, you know, Instagram models or, you know, just girls, pretty girls, just sort of talking about their dating experience. And we'll dive deep into all the weird and wacky parts of dating. You know, what's going on in dating apps, the weirdest messages they've received, all that good stuff. And yeah, we'll get my weird takes on it as well yeah if you enjoyed it please let me know down below and we will bring more of these sort of videos to you but yeah just want to say thank you again so much for watching and if you could like and subscribe that would mean an awful lot so yeah have a good day guys go have a pint a drink you deserve it after listening to my fucking voice for about an hour and a half so yeah thank you guys mm -hmm.